Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Angelica from Circante, and I will be moderating today's session. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items to cover that you've probably heard before. Um, two quick ones. Yes, these sessions are being recorded and will be available on demand after the event. We will also be pinging everybody with an email just to remind you that these on-demand sessions are available. Secondly, if we have some time at the end, we will be doing live Q&A. You, you have the option of coming on stage and speaking and asking your question, or you can just post your question um, in a regular format on the Q&A tab. Lastly, use the chat. There's emojis, there's GIFs, and more. We want to hear from you. Now, let's go get ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today, Noah Dinking, who has an awesome session ready for us today, all about Stencil's email builder tool, and I will hand it over to you, Noah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Angelica. Super appreciate it. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, let's get started with some fun. So in the chat, write the most interesting Halloween costume you saw just a few days ago. Uh, let's make this fun and interactive. I'll give folks just another couple seconds. Okay, a couple from Wicked. There we go. Love it. Sweet. Last chance for anybody who just joined, feel free to write your the most interesting uh, Halloween costume you saw just a few days ago. Keep those fingers moving. Nice. Love it. Yeah. In New York, there's a, where I'm based, there's, there's a ton of really good ones and, and always super cute with the kids uh, who are out and about and the, the family costumes are, are always um, amazing. Sweet. Um, well, good morning, everybody. Really excited to be here. Uh, my name is Noah Dinkin, founder and CEO of Stencil, the collaborative email and landing page creation platform. Um, I want to share with you how it's possible for you to create amazing emails and landing pages that look great and perform really, really well, but without all of the horrible, painful back and forth that you're probably dealing with today. Um, today in the session, we're gonna take a look at why that back and forth exists, right? To fix it, we need to understand what's happening there, how it's a major pain for anybody involved, uh, and by doing things differently, how you and the team can be more efficient, more strategic, and make a real impact on the business performance that you care about. And so let's start by sort of a simple sentence that we all know to be true, right? It's creating an email on a landing page just takes way, way too long. Uh, and by long, I often mean days, oftentimes weeks, just to get one out the door um, and hours. Uh, and that's one email, right? Hours to produce a landing page. Sometimes depending on the complexity of the landing page, that can take a lot longer. And so why is the case? Why is that the case, right? And um, it's really important when we think about this to understand the why to then know where you can go to go and fix that. Um, and so let's start by focusing on email creation. Um, if I were to ask you how you send your marketing emails, you'll probably, especially because you're here at Marjorie and give me uh, the answer that's one of these two platforms, right? It's the name of the marketing automation platform or ESP or marketing cloud your organization uses, and maybe you use a few of them. And um, my guess here is most folks are on uh, what used to be known as Pardot and love this Pardot, uh, Marketing Cloud Account Engagement today. Um, but then if I ask you another question, which is how do you actually create those emails? Um, very likely your answer may touch on that same platform, but you're going to describe a whole bunch of things that live completely outside of that same platform. Um, and it's going to be a process that involves a lot of really talented people going back and forth in a really complicated, time consuming way. Um, and that's really, really painful. Um, sometimes it has just as many folks as we have on the slide today. Sometimes it has multiples of this many people, depending on um, how big your organization is or, or what the process looks like. Um, there's a lot of back and forth here because there's a lot of different stakeholders, right? There's specialists or experts using single purpose tools uh, that generally don't talk to other, other technology in the stack. Um, and it's, it creates a lot of problems, both in communication and actually 
um, even uh, working together and collaborating on things where multiple people need to be talking and, and working synchronously. Um, but long story short, at the end of the day, uh, it's a lot of folks who are working together in disparate places, uh, bottlenecks, uh, redo, do over, another version, um, debates that are all async and really slow, um, just slow the whole thing down. And, and probably to something that we all feel, right? Tension, the anxiety arises. Uh, morale of the team uh, isn't helped by a process that looks like this. And, and for the business, right, the SLAs often are a struggle to meet. Um, and really what that means is the objectives of that campaign, that email campaign for marketing for the business um, often aren't reached. Um, and so where does this back and forth actually occur? And, and uh, let's look at that in a bit of a step. So typically this starts with some sort of requester, as we call them, um, a marketer, someone who puts together a brief or a copy doc. Um, usually in Google Docs, Microsoft Word, they put together the high level details, what they're looking for, the strategy, who their audiences are, um, the date, other things that are going as part of this campaign, what the goal is, right? They attach that to some sort of project management tool, uh, Asana, Monday, Workfront, Reich, uh, you name it. Um, that generally gets passed over to other people to go and help uh, produce, whether those are designers or brand teams, maybe they're internal or external at an agency. Uh, those folks work in one of the Adobe Creative Suite tools or Figma, mock it up, and then send that back to the marketer to get comments or feedback. Um, the marketer goes, this is great, but now that I see it, here's 50 changes, uh, right? Because they couldn't uh, necessarily think of all those things up front. Uh, that starts a back and forth, and uh, eventually other people on that marketing team get tagged in to give comments or feedback. Um, Next step, someone gets tagged in to go and build it, right? And so whether they're literally writing the code in Dreamweaver or another coding tool or using uh, the Pardot Builder or Marketing Cloud uh, Email Studio or something like that, um, they then create it. It then gets sent back to marketing and other folks because oftentimes uh, once you code or once you build it, it doesn't perfectly match the design. That starts a whole other round of back and forth with a lot of stakeholders. Finally, depending on your organization, there's probably some sort of approvals process. If you're in a regulated industry, that might be a whole uh, big structured process with a bunch of steps and required approvers and compliance. Uh, other folks, this is more informal, but there's still uh, certain folks that need to see it and give a thumbs up before it goes out the door. Uh, finally, we, we all pray that there's not an 11th hour change from an executive that sends this all the way back to the beginning. Um, and it gets passed over to uh, someone in marketing ops or campaign ops or someone who's in the ESP or marketing automation platform to go load send even more proofs, make sure it renders the right way, nothing got funky with the code, uh, and finally hit send. Um, that's quite a lot. I'm out of breath just describing that. And that's all just for one. Uh, imagine what this looks like. Uh, and you probably don't have to imagine if you send a bunch of emails every single week or every month. Uh, that's a really, really heavy process. Um, and so why is there so much back and forth? Um, let's play a little uh, Family Feud style game here. Uh, feel free to write in the chat and i appreciate folks uh writing in the other things uh, the other tools that you all are using here um thanks angela for, for asking the question um why is there so much back and forth feel free to write in the chat what you think is, is causing this too many people thanks avery why else where does the buck stop Maybe it never does, and it just keeps getting back and forth or gets split into quarters, and everybody throws the quarters around. Right? Priorities, too many people, siloed tools. That's a great one. Cool. Another couple seconds here. Yeah, unclear rules, unclear strategy, right? And sort of, you can think about that as, as process and isn't well defined there. Um, there you go. Okay, so keep those coming, right? Um, let's, uh, what we've heard, right? And I've heard uh, pieces of these from a few different folks, um, right? Great comment, Rachel, right? The first one is the person who's deciding what the content should be or what the email should be, or the requester, if you will, um, is not the producer of the email, right? They, they, by definition, make a request of someone else, whether that's a simple copy doc or a full brief or, or some sort of other campaign request document. Um, and so, Inherently, they're making requests to someone else. There's already a back and forth because that means there's two stakeholders there. Um, and so uh, that starts the back and forth that a whole bunch of other folks get tagged in on. 
Um, more good ones coming in the chat. Appreciate that. Uh, there you go, Krista. Exactly. Um, the next one we hear is that the requester, and you sort of heard me touch on this when we were walking through that last slide on the process. The requester oftentimes, because they're requesting in a Google Doc or an intake form or something else, doesn't have a really good way uh, at all to visualize the email that they're creating with the copy, uh, the content that they're putting in it, right? And so that's why when they first see that mock-up come back, they go, oh, this is great, but now that I see it, right, keywords there, uh, here's a bunch of changes, right? They couldn't easily see where words are gonna wrap. Uh, they couldn't see that, oh, that paragraph is really long relative to other things there, or that these images don't fit together. Um, and so not being able to visualize as they're creating is, is uh, causes a lot of challenges. Um, the next one, uh, and I saw a few folks write about this in, in the chat, um, nobody can easily see anybody else's comments because a lot of the time, the places that these emails or mockups or proofs are shared uh, are one-on-one. -on -one. Someone sends a proof from the ESP or, or marketing automation platform, and then the, the recipient just hits reply and sends back the comment to whoever deployed the proof. But if that proof went to 10 people individually, the other nine people have no idea what that person said. Uh, and especially if those comments conflict or they're replying to or commenting on the wrong version or an older version, uh, that only just adds a bunch of time and a bunch of confusion and back and forth um, and just uh, eats up a lot of time overall in the process. Um, and then lastly, the whole process for those who are familiar, right, is a waterfall process, right? The step to the left have to happen before the steps uh, to the right. Um, and so that's why it's extra painful when someone later on in the process, like an executive comes in and changes the whole thing, uh, because it has to go generally all the way back to the beginning and then go through those processes, uh, again. Um, right. And that's at the end of the day, just really, really painful, um, and really costly. Um, and so there's a bunch of other reasons, but we've, we've helped distill these down. And I think the folks in the chat have touched uh, on a few of these, these are the main reasons why all that back and forth exists. Um, and it's 2024 and that's, that's pretty ridiculous, uh, or just about, um, that this is still the way that this process happens. Um, we've been in business uh, a good amount of time. We've spoken with a whole lot of companies, um, emerging growth, mid market up through fortune 10, the largest companies in the world. And so in our research, um, across business sectors and sizes, uh, we found more than 80% of the companies take two weeks or more just to get one email out the door two weeks um right and so in today where there's a bunch of other awesome technology that lets people work together in real time um or do things uh, otherwise uh, pretty synchronously um the way people make emails is still a process that's been largely the same for a couple of decades um and so uh that that doesn't work Right. Um, and, and clearly that process is deserving of a, of a look, let alone a uh, change. Right. And so um, not only is this process really slow, I think, as we've all felt, the number of email requests has grown dramatically, uh, initially spurred on by COVID and everything moving much more digital. But as more uh, segmentation, personalization and different audiences comes into play. Right. You're going to want to send different things to different audiences. Well, those only increase the number of requests. And all that does is just put more pressure on this inefficient process. Um, and so net net, right? Like that's ridiculous. It's the end of 2023, almost 24. Uh, it takes way too long and it is just wildly expensive, whether you're paying for third party folks or, or companies to help, uh, or even the talented internal folks that you have spending this time. Um, the most expensive thing when we talk with executives around this, uh, is all of the work that the folks involved in this process can't get to because they're stuck going back and forth dealing with this uh, endless stream of changes, fixes, you know, comments and things like that. Um, and everything is really, really manual. Um, and so for the folks in the session, I'm not sure the roles of everybody on the um, everybody here, but taking a guess, um, your job uh, generally shouldn't be to handle uh, nonstop, tedious, monotonous tasks that technology can help you do a lot more efficiently or in an automated way, um, right? You want to be spending your time and create the most value for your team and the organization, uh, thinking and operating at a much more strategic level uh, and operating in a much more creative space to help hit those goals that the team and the campaign care about and to ultimately make a business, uh, an impact on that business performance, 
right? Not just copying and pasting the updated headline or swapping out the image or something like that. Um, and so for that 80% taking two weeks or more, when we dug down another level, right? 90% um, of that time is spent on production related activities, right? This is the simple manual heavy process stuff, the copy and paste, swapping out the link, doing the manual QA checklists, uh, resizing images, um, all that kind of stuff. And so simple math if 90% is spent on, on production level processes, only 10% is left over to actually spend on strategic operations. Uh, and those are the things that actually help you generate optimized performance, right? Thinking and operating strategically is what you need to actually uh, do and have the time to do to give yourself the chance to beat those goals. Um, and so, again, it, it's pretty striking, right? Like 90% is spent on those production activities and only 10% on the strategic stuff. And so... I think we all know here, right? Email certainly is the workhorse of, of many marketing campaigns and programs. And that's true whether you're in a B2B or B2C environment. Um, the ability to find uh, customers or prospects, move them through the buying purchase consideration uh, funnel, right? Move them to action and driving uh, future value is second to none. Um, we all know the ROI is ridiculous from email. Uh, it's through the roof, right? Whenever, you know, think about whenever there's a program that's behind or an event that doesn't have the attendees, what are the first words out of anybody's mouth? Could we send some more emails, right? Like it works and it works really, really well. Um, but you can't drive those results uh, or even better results if you're stuck in a process um, that hampers the team's performance and is holding folks back. Uh, right, you want to achieve those amazing results for the organization um, and take advantage of new technology and things like generative AI and other things around that uh, to speed up and, and make your performance even stronger. Title of the session touches on email and landing pages. And so we spent a lot of time talking about email, but a lot of this also ties to landing pages, right? Landing pages also incredibly inefficient, a lot of back and forth there as well. Um, in some cases, it's just as inefficient as email. In some organizations, depending uh, on certain things, it's more. Sometimes it's a little bit less, but it's a lot of back and forth between marketers or requesters, specialists, web teams, digital teams, um, right? And uh, touching on the forms, the code, making sure everything works well. Um, certainly not everybody uh, can build an email or a landing page, and that makes it a lot more complicated because you're involving things like JavaScript or forms or code. Um, and it takes a lot... Uh, a really long time. And so, you know, no surprise here, that sounds pretty darn familiar to email, um, if you ask me. Um, the two most common ways to build landing pages that we see, right, are either to use a builder that sits within your marketing automation platform, right, something like a Pardot, uh, or a standalone landing page builder. Um, both have challenges. Uh, generally, both are pretty difficult to use and, and uh, lack certain functionality. Um, the mark, the map builder, right? Market animation platform builder tends to be pretty rigid, just generally unforgiving, uh, and templates are, are really tough and hard to change and easy to break. Uh, if someone clicks the wrong thing or drags the wrong thing. Um, and so generally that means an expert, uh, potentially like some of you on this, uh, session needs to get involved. Um, standalone builders offer more flexibility. So it's like a third party tool. Um, but they generally can be, um, taken advantage of if the person using it uh, is an expert uh, user or um, otherwise uh, you're not going to get the most out of those platforms. You're using them, you know, a really, really powerful tool for something just to do really simple. Um, and that creates other challenges for the org. Uh, and then still there's the back and forth of who's creating the content, who's deciding the content, who's giving feedback and comments and getting approvals. Uh, and that only makes it more challenging. Um, getting that subscriber or the prospect or the customer to click right on the CTA in a marketing email, that's amazing, right? Getting them over to the landing page there. Um, and then, right, your the results are heavily determined on, on how well that landing page performs. Uh, it's really, really important. Um, and so you wanna make sure that's consistent in terms of what the messaging from the email matches the page. Um, you wanna make sure the branding is consistent so that's not a, a disjointed experience um, and really uh, reduce any friction you can um, into getting those folks to take that next best action or the most valuable action that you want to do. Um, and overall, like that's where you should be spending your headspace, uh, not involved in, in doing the little stuff just uh, that takes up so much time. And so um, excited to share that we we believe and, and we've seen, right, you, you don't have to stay stuck in that old way that's been the same way for a few decades. 
uh, creating those emails or landing pages um, in a way that takes too long is really complex and just painful. Um, there's another way to do it, and it's a different path that helps you and the team optimize your performance on the campaign, uh, making great things happen um, and really hitting your goals. And so that means you're going to see better program engagement. You're going to see more clicks, more conversions, more revenue, ultimately, right? That's how the executives and folks outside your company measure performance, right? At the end of the day, those are the top level metrics. Um, and so how do you get that success? How do you get set up to get there? from a process that just sucks time uh, from everybody to one that lets you consume, or excuse me, create amazing emails and landing pages, um, focusing on the actions that actually drive results rather than the time sucking back and forth uh, production level stuff. And so we, we believe it involves three critical layers of transformation. We're gonna go into this uh, right now. So to get results, you need to start by improving creation efficiency. And we start here because if production level activities are consuming 90% of the time in that pie chart, that's the biggest slice of the pie that you need to attack and really get to a much better place because otherwise you're not going to be able to find the time uh, to devote elsewhere. And so you need to improve content creation efficiency um, in order to free up huge amounts of time to allow you and others involved to focus on strategic operations. Right. And having the time and the mental bandwidth and the space to do that is what allows you to unlock optimized performance. Um, right. Because if you don't have the time, you're just trying to keep up and get the things out the door this week. Uh, and that's really tough to actually get ahead. And so we studied this across many, many companies and teams. And those are the three uh, transformation layers that apply to every single organization. Um, I'll give folks a second. If you write in the chat, if if at a high level that resonates with you, and then uh, we're going to go into how we can do that. Feel free to give a thumbs up uh, or emoji there as well. Cool. So here's how we do it, right? There's two components. The first is creation by everyone, not just designers, developers, specialists, or experts, right? And the way you do that is through no code or low code, right? Using modules or templates that are reusable. Uh, very, very rare that an organization needs to create bespoke things for every single email, right? And so this empowers non-technical people to actually create those high quality on-brand emails and landing pages uh, with little or no uh, knowledge of uh, the code or the underlying technical stuff. Um, in addition to that, that enables faster creative iteration, right? Folks can move things around. Folks can see, hey, what would it look like if I did this? Or, wow, that headline doesn't look great given the space. Let me try different versions, right? Um, and that lets them see it and, and uh, actually visualize it like we talked about, right? Um, that lets you bring in advanced technology like Gen AI to help make suggestions or rewrite things uh, to make things even better. But you're doing it in context so you can actually see how it will look uh, in the context of the whole email or asset, rather than doing that in a separate tool and then pasting it in and seeing it doesn't work, right? You want to do that directly in the interface where you're actually doing the creation. Um, automated brand and compliance guardrails. And so these are really, really important, right? And so this uh, allows um, the team, the experts, the designers, the brand team to set up the rules down to an incredibly granular level um, to follow your design system or your corporate design guidelines. Um, and so it allows the designers to set those rules up front and gets them out of being logo police uh, when interacting with marketers and actually having conversations about the higher level uh, creativity or, or more strategic stuff um, and let technology, th those guardrails, enforce or prevent anybody from going out of bounds. Um, and so they remove the need to use really talented, expensive humans uh, to make sure that the hex code is the right color or the font is the right thing. Um, you can uh, set those up front and let technology go ahead and do that for you. Um, and then lastly, right, the, the first, the other thing, excuse me, for creation by everyone is you need to be integrated with everything else around you, right? And so there's a lot of other technology that folks are using in their stack. Um, that's stuff uh, above you, below you, before you, after you, not just uh, the email deployment platform, the marketing automation platform, but literally everything. Uh, right. All of that stuff, it's 2023, all of that stuff can and should work together and talk to each other. 
Uh, and that's going to reduce a whole bunch of chance of, of things going wrong and also make everybody a whole lot more uh, efficient, leading to a lot better performance. The next big thing is collaboration for all the stakeholders, right? And so we know there's a lot of folks involved. Some folks may be doing a lot more of the heavy lifting than others, uh, but it's never just one person from an email from inception throughout the door. Um, and so uh, those folks might be requesters, commenters, approvers, other folks, uh, designers giving feedback, things like that. Um, but there's no good place for that to happen. And so you need um, a solution that supports uh, reviews, commenting, approval workflows, whether they're structured or unstructured, uh, that can support um, the way your team wants to work or, or um, does work today um, and all in one place so people can actually see those things and comment and react to other people's comments rather than two other folks uh, in the previous way making conflicting comments but neither one sees the other uh, and just creates problems. Um, and then given the number of stakeholders involved here, um, you need robust permissions and controls, right? And so that's allowing people to do what they should, but not what they shouldn't. Um, whether that's on the individual level, teams, business units, functions, regions around the world, um, needs to be just really simple and effective uh, to manage what people should be able to do um, right there. Um, and so this is what happens when you put the Stencil email landing page creation platform. Um, right at the center of that whole process, right? It's, it's bringing a missing platform into the world to help you and all of the other stakeholders involved um, make this a much more efficient process, freeing up that time, right? And that allows one place where you can bring in the new technology like Gen AI to help make it better for everybody. Um, it integrates with all the tech already in your stack that I was just talking about, right? The deployment platforms on the right, uh, the image dam, your workflow project management tools, your dynamic content, your links, your tracking, your analytics, uh, even chat or messaging apps like Slack, right? If those are places that people give you feedback, those are absolutely in the problem space and should be involved and integrated. Uh, and of course, your CMS, whichever you're using. Um, these deep, robust integrations all the way around the platform, again, lots of things in addition to the deploy deployment platform um, are going to save you and the team huge amounts of time while reducing that execution risk. And so the Stencil platform, right, allows you to create efficiently, be strategic, and just optimize your email and business performance. And this isn't just a uh, uh, utopia here that we hope to get to, this is real. Um, and we're gonna talk through um, some of the incredible results uh, that companies from emerging growth all the way through some of the world's biggest brands across all sectors are seeing. And so let's talk about some of these results because I know these are things that are going to resonate with you um, and other folks on your team. And so starting with creation efficiency, right? The Milwaukee Bucks, right, uh, win in the NBA uh, and they do it uh, with a bunch of things, the incredible talent on the court, but also an, an efficient, fast moving offense and, and uh, efficient team on the marketing side, right? Um, and their email creation process saves a ton of time um, by using Stencil rather than going back and forth and doing it manually. And so that really helped them improve uh, ticket sales and revenue from ticket sales and merchandise um, by allowing non-technical folks to actually produce completely on brand, professional looking Milwaukee Bucks emails. Um, for Cisco, right, huge global enterprise, its global events team, right, was able to do uh, cross promoting of events um, in a way that subscribers welcomed and engaged with. And so they created all these emails in Stencil and recaptured uh, weeks per email to fine tune the strategy and figure out the messaging that was going to resonate with folks the most. Um, that Those campaigns got click to open rates 221% above the previous benchmark, right? That's an incredible increase. Um, and opens uh, were also 180% above the benchmark. Right. Those are amazing stats that I know leaders in your teams and your org would be really excited to have. Um, lastly, like division of the world's largest health insurer needed to make a bigger business on impact or a bigger impact on business performance. Excuse me. And so uh, by using Stencil, they save a couple hundred hours a month um, that have been taken up in the old uh, previous process. They use that time. They run A-B tests that he could never get to before. They spend more time on personalization and segmentation. Uh, they spend more time being able to look at the library of modules and templates and seeing which ones perform the best, 
uh, and then iterate and champion challenge on those things to get better results. Uh, these are all things that they knew they wanted to do before, but just didn't have the time because the old process consumed so much time. And so after uh, implementing Stencil within the first year, um, they generated $32 million uh, increase in additional sales pipeline, um, which is better than any previous effort that they'd ever done before, which is amazing. Um, hopefully you have an idea now of how you can create emails and landing pages that are look amazing, are on brand, uh, are highly performing without all the back and forth, um, saving you and your team a ton of time so you can think and operate strategically and use that time to drive outsized impact on your business performance. Um, feel free to ask questions uh, in the Q&A tab here. I know we have a little bit of time left, and so I'd love to take those now. Uh, and if not, um, certainly feel free to pop me an email or visit our website, check out our free AI toolkit uh, on the website there, but I'll, I'll hang out here for questions uh, in the Q&A tab. Thanks, Tiffany. So I see that question in the chat and feel free for others, uh, um, write the questions uh, as you come up with them or as you think about them. Um, the Q&A tab is certainly helpful for that. And so um, Tiffany, the, the pricing we're happy to follow up uh, offline with you um, works in a few different tiers and, and um, those are based on uh, platform fee, number of users and, and different capabilities or depth of functionality there. Um, what we also do is help you and the team understand what your process looks like today, like literally mapping it out and helping put um, numbers behind that, whether that's actual hours or minutes of uh, hands on keyboard time, as well as total elapsed time, um, and then help give you a, a calculator spreadsheet that's pretty robust around how much that process costs you today and the team. Um, and we found that that's really helpful in sharing internally um, on your side um to help people understand that um while it maybe isn't the easiest to measure and hasn't been measured in a lot of companies uh this is how much this is actually costing us and um then relative to what the cost of stencil is which could enable us uh, to do even more um than that um is a pretty helpful way to think about the value equation but we're certainly happy to help uh follow up offline with you um, thanks for the question um did you do uh cool steve thanks for the question so um, yes, uh, we know all the uh, ESPs and marketing automation platforms already have an email builder. I think Pardot has a couple actually. Um, and uh, depending on your process and your org, some, some organizations don't even use them because they do the, the creation process completely outside of those platforms. Uh, some use them for part of it, but the platforms don't have all the workflow, the commenting, the approvals, the integrations uh, with things beyond that same platform. Um, and so uh, think of Stencil, we don't send any emails, we don't touch the list. So from the data privacy side, uh, really clean there, um, but a much, much more robust platform um, that includes all of the stuff that happens prior to your ESP. So uh, we really focus on uh, the area from like inception to finished asset, enabling uh, a really safe, simple place for folks to create amazing content, even if they're not technical, even if they're not a designer, um, and all those experts can sleep at night knowing that folks couldn't go out of bounds, right? The name stencil comes from uh, stencil, right? You can't screw up stencil. Um, and so that's where we're focused. And then we integrate directly into those platforms. So as soon as someone has finished creating in stencil and approved, uh, the content can automatically be pushed uh, directly into the right place in your uh, Pardot or Marketing Cloud account. Um, and so then it can be set up for uh, deployment there. Um, cool. Um, uh, yes, uh, Amy, there's some more follow-up questions on pulling in reusable content from Salesforce. Um, but yeah, we have a, a, a bunch of different capabilities around uh, content snippets or pieces or fragments, as well as dynamic content, uh, which is usually um, related to your question there. And so happy to follow up offline. There's a, there's a handful of different follow-up questions or nuance around exactly how you have it set up today and where you might use that. Um, and then in Stencil also, right, we have modules and, and other pieces of reusable content. And so um, if that content doesn't already exist in the uh, ESP or marketing animation platform, you can certainly have that 
uh, or create that in Stencil and then reuse it there as well and then make sure it's all up to date. So if you needed to update, uh, you know, a link in the footer or something like that, you don't need to do it in 100 places. You can do it in one uh, place and then Stencil gives you the permissions to um, push that out to your users and, and whether that's a required change or a recommended change, um, all that kind of stuff just uh, in a much, much more robust um, way. Cool. Let's look at some more questions here. Um, did you, uh, let's, follow up. Um, let's go, Peter. Uh, so uh, can the platform Stencil pull the merge tags depending on your ESP? Yes. Yeah, so um, Stencil uh, is agnostic to deployment platforms. <clears throat> and so some large companies we work with have a handful of different ESPs and marketing automation platforms in-house. Uh, whether those are each used by different teams or business units in the company, um, or uh, the same team is using a few different ones, depending on the kind of email. And we support um, personalization merge tags across all of those. Um, Stencil makes it really easy to set those up up front, enable a non-technical user to put those in place in the right place, knowing that they can't break them. They can't put, put a space where it doesn't belong. They can't make them all caps if it should be lowercase or any of that kind of stuff. Um, and then under the hood in the code that's output from Stencil, we include the proper tag uh, exactly as it should be, depending on the platform that it's going to. And so just remove any of that really annoying stuff that I know uh, folks uh, end up consuming a lot of time making sure that those tags are perfect, because if they're not, they obviously cause an error or have broken personalization there. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we've had that from day one, and it's a pretty robust functionality in order to um, make that seamless and, and really easy to use way. Um, Amy uh, can use Stencil to create documents or presentation slides uh, as well. Um, so Stencil has the ability to export you know, a, a PDF of a finished email. Um, and so we have some folks who use that uh, for similar kinds of flyers and things like that. Um, so, but not today, or let's say not yet uh, in those kind of other um, asset types, um, though we'd certainly love to chat with you about um, the use case there and, and certainly can follow up uh, offline or pop me an email and I'll, I'll loop in the right folks on our team. Um, more than happy to do that. My email is noah at stencil.com. Cool. Keep these questions coming. This is great. Um, so uh, Mary Grace asked the question, how uh, incorporating AI? So we have two things. Um, one, the, the QR code on the screen here. Um, we have a free AI toolkit on stencil.com, totally free. It has a bunch of different AI tools, things like helping you suggest different subject lines, pre-headers, um, rewriting copy, changing the tone, um, a bunch of really cool uh, stuff there. Totally free. Uh, just put in your email and, and you're good to go. Um, some of those things also exist in the core stencil platform for customers. And so um, enabling folks to um, leverage the uh, technology and the power of Gen AI um, in a safe way to help you and your teams uh, make better content. And so whether that's giving additional suggestions for things or uh, staying within the tone or suggesting subject lines based on the content of the email um, or things like that, um, we just want to give you and the team superpowers directly in the place where it, it's most helpful, which is in the creation platform. Um, and so we'll continue to advance that. There's a whole bunch of exciting things that are on uh, our minds and roadmap around that area. Um, and you'll continue to see a bunch more uh, things there. And we certainly love uh, feedback. So as there's ideas that you or others may have, like feel free to reach out and ask, uh, ask us or, or suggest those things. Cool. Other questions? Um, there was a question I got in a, a private message. Um, someone's asking like, how hard is Stencil to roll out? Um, or how do we help uh, folks roll this out? Um, and so it's a really good question. Um, we have a phenomenal world-class uh, team who are really, really good at this. Um, and so uh, setup uh, is pretty easy. You can certainly do it all yourself. We have lots of folks who work with us and we help do the initial setup, um, walk through training activation, because we know um, there's no success if you and the users that you want to use Stencil aren't actually using it and don't know how to use it. And so that team isn't going to stop working with you. Um, until everybody is up, running, happy using the platform. Um, we've heard from a few companies that we work with that Stencil is actually the most adopted piece of MarTech in their entire organization, which is pretty incredible to say, given other incredible things that are out there. 
Um, and so this is really, really important to us. And then beyond that, we have an amazing uh, customer success team who's there helping do um, regular business reviews, discussions, understanding your goals as a business, you and your leadership of where you want to go, and then helping bring our expertise and knowledge to that of how do we help get you there, right? It's often a crawl, walk, run approach, even if you have a lot of teams or divisions you want to bring on board, right? Best practice is generally like, let's uh, not do them all at once. Like, let's get there um, so we can ensure success along the way and helping bring our established, really successful playbooks around change management, training, um, and other uh, ways of, of more successfully activating um, technology like Stencil in your organization. We have a lot of experience with that from both uh, mid-sized companies all the way up through huge companies. Um, and that's something our team has been uh, continually honing and developing over a number of years. Um, and so, yeah, happy to put you in touch with anybody on that team on our side uh, or even um, folks that we already work with. So you can hear about their experience uh, there as well. Yep. Cool. Um, cool. Shamika, uh, hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, yes, on the stencil resources section, um, I think uh, someone else or Amanda may have just answered that for you. Um, stencil.com, uh, click on the resources on the top. There's a whole bunch of uh, success stories, so case studies, white papers, um, how stencil integrates, a whole bunch of other information there. Um, and, and if you don't see something, feel free to hop in the, the chat on the website and our team will be more than happy to help point you in the right place, answer questions uh, or set up a live discussion um, around that. Um, cool. Let's see if there's other questions there. Cool. So um, Peter, yep. Can you do email preview testing in the Stencil platform or through a partner? Um, and so, sure, uh, Stencil, um, by virtue of being a WYSIWYG, helps people see as they're creating the email um, what it actually looks like. And then certainly with Stencil's native uh, commenting review and approvals technology uh, improving, you and the other stakeholders can actually see what the email looks like. You can see what that look, email looks like in uh, desktop, mobile, light mode, partial dark mode, uh, dark mode. Um, we have folks who work with uh, the other established uh, providers in the space, whether that's someone like an email and asset or others. Um, and you can deploy from Stencil directly into those to trigger those proofs. Um, a lot of the time, uh, people, when they're using Stencil, um, because there's nothing the user can do in the builder side of Stencil that would actually change how an email would render, um, uh, they're comfortable once the things are set up up front and tested um, to not have to see the email in 82 versions of Android or all the different versions of Outlook because they know that uh, Stencil is protecting it and making sure it will work every time. Um, happy to follow up, uh, depending on your use case, depending on the kinds of devices your users use, um, more about that or, or what uh, challenges you're seeing there. But generally, we find that's a piece of the process that we can make a lot more efficient for you um, as well. Awesome. Um, I think we're running just out of time uh, here. I very much appreciate the time uh, this morning um, from everybody. Um, also, uh, truly, whoops, there we go. I uh, want to thank uh, Sir Conte, uh, an amazing crew of folks, a really, really awesome organization, just good, fun people uh, for hosting the amazing event. If you haven't uh, partied with us and Sir Conte at, at uh, Salesforce Connections uh, the last couple of years, uh, next year, this coming one is, is sure to be another good one. <clears throat> um, and so thank you to Sir Conte for hosting this, as well as the other amazing sponsors uh, who alongside us have helped uh, bring you Mar Dreamin. Um, hope the rest of your day is awesome, terrific. Feel free to reach out to us if we can be helpful for anything. Uh, and otherwise, thank you and back to you, Angelica. Awesome. Thank you, Noah. That was so awesome. And before we head out, we have a, another group of sessions coming up at 12 p.m. Eastern today. We break at 1230. And then at 1 p.m. Eastern, we have the Marketing Cloud Product Roadmap, which is the only session that we're not allowed to record because it is the product roadmap. So make sure you catch that at 1 p.m. Eastern today. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your Marjorie.